What's up, y'all? So what I got here is a Palmetto State Armory Jackal. I just put out a photo, I would say a couple hours ago, and I said I was gonna do a video on what I do and don't like when it comes to this rifle. So there's a lot of things I do like about it, but there's a few things that I really don't like about it. We got this typical Ugg boot type stock, but it's Palmetto's version, so it's probably gonna be a little bit different than the Scars, and I'm not too familiar with the Scars, so let's get into this stock first. You're gonna have a button right there and a button right here. You push both of these guys in, can extend the stock. That's pretty cool. So if you're a bigger guy and you want the stock all the way extended, you're good to go. And pretty stout lock up right there. Push this guy right back in, goes in good. Solid clicks. Also, you got your little button right here. You can press this guy in and fold the stock to the side for transportation or even if you wanna look cool firing it or whatever the case is, you know, you're gonna go like that. Also, you got a cheek riser right here. So you press these in, pull back on that, pull up the whole cheek riser. Now that's gonna be for your taller optics and whatnot, which is pretty cool. I also like that. This is your AR-15 lower. You can slap in any aftermarket trigger, any aftermarket uh, magazine release, any aftermarket safety selector, takedown pins. But one of my big gripes, and I'm not gonna get too much into this right now, is this bolt catch. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. That's one of my gripes right there. But you could also put any type of uh, pistol grip on here, which is pretty awesome. Now, this is a SIG Tango at MSM, MSR 1 to 6. So this thing is really dope on this rifle. I really, really dig it. Pairs really well. My only gripe when it comes to those two made it together because it's like perfect for this rifle, like the color and all that, is the stock. I don't like how the stock is super skinny. I'm not a guy that likes those uh, standard stocks that you would get on like your standard issue AR-15. I personally like the B5s or like the wider Magpuls. They get better cheek welds. But that's nothing to write home. This rifle can still shoot. It's still plenty capable, just like that. In the upper, as you can see, the whole pick rail is one all the way down. Now, the part that comes off is this lower handguard, which I have not taken that apart, but I'm pretty sure you can take off this Allen key. There's another one on the other side, and that Allen key up there, and this bottom piece of the handguard will come off. That's pretty neat. But that way you can mount stuff further out and not have to worry about alignment issues and your handguard not being straight which the technology we have these days that's not really so much of an issue on this side let's actually let's talk about this real quick we got our charging handle right here there's a little bit of wiggle to it it's also got a pretty cool little jackal logo on there but we're not really going for the looks here we want stuff to be reliable anyways you can slap this charging handle onto the other side so if you're right, left-handed, whatever, easy as a swap. It's pretty easy to come out. You just got to take apart the rifle. You got to get the bolt carrier out, and then you can swap it to the other side. You got M-Lock all the way down. You got QD points right here and right here, and I'm personally one to love QD points closer to me whenever I'm running a sling. That's just my preference. I feel like the further out they go, it's more comfortable to carry, but if I want to move fast, I like the QD points closer to me. Moving forward, like I said, you got M-Lock all the way down, all the way underneath. You can mount whatever you want up underneath there. You got an adjustable gas block right here. Now, if you're going to run suppressed or whatever the case, or even if the system's over gassed, you can turn down, you can tune it to however you like it, whatever your personal preference is. So that's pretty neat. And at the end here, we got just a regular, it's not an A2, but it's some sort of flash hider. I personally think it's ugly as hell and would definitely swap that out, but it works. I mean, it doesn't throw that much flash. It does exactly what it's intended for. So this is a nitride barrel. It's a one and seven inch twist barrel. We're coming down, coming back down for the upper receiver. We got our deflector right here. Looks like this deflector will come right out with the Allen key and you can just take off the deflector. Something else to really talk about here when it comes to this rifle is its weight. With this thing being unloaded, and having a SIG Tango up top, it should not weigh this much. And it weighs significantly more than just your average AR-15. 
Now, even if it is a 10 pound rifle, I haven't weighed it yet. I don't know the exact poundage on this rifle unloaded. If it's 10 pounds, like that's no big deal. You could still wield that unless you're like super weak. The big problem comes in whenever you have to walk with it for miles. And the only way to know that if you're not military is if like you go coyote hunting or something like that and you really truck around one of these rifles, you'd be like, damn, this rifle is kind of heavy. Like you really figure out what you like in your gear when you actually use it and what you want to swap up with it. But this thing is definitely heavy. I don't think this be I don't think this would be my first choice taking out to the field. That's for dang sure. Let's get into this rifle and see what I like and don't like about the insides of it because I got a few different things to gripe about here. So getting into it, you got your two takedown pins, just like your standard AR-15, like I mentioned. So you take these guys out and your upper will come off and then you'll have your lower piece. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So here's the upper disconnected from the lower. And this is definitely the heavy part. This feels, the, the lower feels pretty standard, just like the average AR-15 lower with a buffer tube and all that good jazz. But the upper is definitely the heavy part. Feels kind of front heavy i guess i mean i put my hand right here and it's not too bad but whenever you have the rifle shouldered it and you got it up against your shoulder it definitely wants to dip forward it's not like an ar-15 to where some ar-15s are really well balanced and that's a big deal especially if you're going to try to keep rounds on target shooting fast so this guy being kind of heavy i think the lot i think a lot of the heaviness definitely comes from how much material that they used to make the jackal the hand guards, they seem like they're pretty dang heavy duty. They definitely are not going to break. You could tell just by feeling this guy. You got all these little Allen bolts right here. And there's some sort of, I would say, steel that goes like, kind of runs like the rails on an AK, I guess you'd say, because this bolt carrier is moving back and forth in there. And that's on the inside of the receiver. That's definitely going to make the weight significantly higher. So let's go ahead and talk about the Jackal's lower real quick. I'm going to get into my first actual gripe of this lower. So the lower, the first thing you're going to notice is that they're pretty much the same. Besides, like if you're not looking at this guy right here, the buffer tube on back, they're, they're pretty much the same. Safety selector, all that good stuff, they're pretty much the same. The big difference comes in the, the bolt catch right here. First thing you could see is putting these really close is that this one is significantly skinnier than this guy so a lot less material and what's the issue with that so putting in a new trigger somebody tripped the trigger here the trigger went forward slam forward hit this takedown uh the the bolt catch i'm sorry and it sent this guy flying so it broke right off this whole piece right here broke right off so all you had to work with was this little guy down here because it was snapped up here and you can't just throw any AR-15 bolt catch on there because, so this is an AR-15 bolt catch. If you try to slap this guy on here, as you can see, the bolt catch, there's no room for it to sit in there. So you wouldn't be able to push it in at all. So you can't use the AR-15 bolt catch. That's a big issue in my opinion. So with this being significantly smaller, and if you're uh, taking it apart to field strip it, clean it in the field or whatever, and you accidentally trip that trigger, and you snap this, there goes your bolt catch. And that's a good tool to have on the AR-15 or even the Jackal. So I definitely do not like that. I do not like the fact how small that is and how skinny that is. It seems really weak and brittle. So let's go ahead and get into the upper, the inside of the upper here. So how you're gonna take this guy apart is you're gonna push in on this recoil spring right here, push in and up, and that slides it forward. You grab this. You pull it all the way out, and it should come all the way out. And if it doesn't, just go ahead and set that aside and just kind of pull back on this. And now we got our piston system. So looks like a standard bolt right there off an AR-15. Looks, looks the same pretty much. You got our standard piston. Should be all chrome right there, but it's been used a little bit. There's no gouging or nothing like that. I don't see in any of the bolt or... I, I don't see on a bolt or anything of that nature. So let's go ahead and take it apart. Now I'm going to talk about my other gripe. One of the cool things I do like about this is that you got your cotter pin right here. You can easily slip this in, take out your cotter pin, and your firing pin comes out. Then you got your can pin. Your whole can pin comes out here. 
and you got your bolt. So now here comes my other gripe is this is not like a standard bolt for your AR-15. Now I've had a PSA bolt break right at the cam. So if this bolt breaks and you can't slap in like a more heavy duty bolt, that's an issue. But you got like the same extractor and all that good stuff. Like everything else looks the same except you can't use the same cam. You can't use the same bolt as you would for an AR-15. So the parts aren't compatible. Obviously, because it's a piston driven system, it's not a DI gun, you're, you know, you're going to have proprietary parts. And I just feel like in a shit hit the fan scenario for this being a shit hit the fan gun, that's no bueno. You're going to run into some issues. I would definitely say grab if you're going to own a Jackal. I would, because I've already broke a PSA bolt carrier. Well, I'm sorry, a bolt carriers don't really break. I broke a PSA bolt right at the cam. I would say at least grab a couple more of these until maybe a company will come out that you know like has their parts up to spec i i don't know I, i'm not really trying to shit on psa too hard but i have had a bolt carrier break on them i'm sorry a bolt break from them that's i mean it's a big issue if your bolt breaks your gun's down the gun's no good until you put in a new bolt your cam's also different it doesn't have that uh that top ledge is on the side as you would so that's definitely something to talk about so if your bolt broke and you somehow lost your cam, it fell onto the ground or something like that for whatever reason. It's, the system seems to be pretty closed, but let's just say it did fall on the ground and you, and you did not have one of these, you would not be able to hold your bolts in, your firing pin, all that good stuff would just be falling right out. That's not good. Let's go ahead and put it back together. We're gonna eject from the right. So let's go ahead and slap that in on the right. Put in our cam here. Cam's gonna go in this way. Okay, firing pin went in, the cotter pin can go in. Okay, cotter pin's in. Okay, system should be good. Now, this system has no gas rings, so I almost wonder if it's gonna be a big time issue whenever you fire it because the gas rings and the, the DI system really helps on the wear of the cam in there. And this guy just flying back and forth violently with no gas rings to kind of help that whole situation in there is it going to be an issue or is this thing going to break time will tell i don't know how it's going to run let's go ahead and get it all slapped back together here let's put in our bolt carrier which the bolt and the bolt carrier are definitely finicky when it comes to this rifle it's one thing i don't like is you got to like play with it to, to, to get it in there Sorry, before I put it back together, one more thing I wanted to mention is this piston. Look at how much slop this thing has. You can turn it, you can wiggle it. That's a lot of slop. Um, I mean, I don't know if that's good for the system or not, but that's definitely worth mentioning. So let's go ahead and slap it all back together now. I had to pull this thing off camera because, damn, I had a hard time with it, getting that bolt carrier in there. So in the heat of the moment, if you were cleaning your rifle and, uh, you know, you're having a hard time getting your bolt carrier, or your gun back together, that's another issue. The ease of use is a little bit harder. That piston moves so much in there that I think it's getting caught on something on the inside to where you can't just push that bolt carrier straight home. Therefore, you can't get the gun back together to get it up and running. That's something definitely worth mentioning. But now that we got it back together, go ahead and cycle it a few times. Now we got the lower with the upper here. Everything's back back to its regular shape. Let's go ahead and do a few function checks. Charge it. Safety off. Pull the trigger. Okay, nice clean break. Make sure we get a reset. Okay. Good to go. All right. There's the Palmetto State Armory Jackal. Um, my few only gripes are is that it's proprietary parts you know you're gonna have to really stock up on these parts because i don't know how trustworthy they are unlike an ar-15 that you could just buy from palmetto and then upgrade as you go and start off with that platform with the frame and receiver i'm sorry the lower piece in a receiver and then start slapping in more better parts you can't do that with the jackal that's my gripe and also shit hit the fan worst case scenario and you need a gun, this is your only gun, if something breaks in it, and if you don't have extra parts, 
you're SOL, man. Like you're done because this gun, it's, you're, you're not going to be able to find parts. Not that, not that many people are going to have jackals unless you own like 30 jackals or if you buy one jackal and then just um, buy a shitload of extra parts for it, which I would do. Honestly, if I was going to own this rifle, that's exactly what I would do. I would buy extra bolts, try to get an extra carrier. I would um, I would get any parts that could possibly break. I would definitely also for sure 100% get this uh, bolt catch right here. The downside to that is if this breaks in the field, I don't know if you've ever installed one of these because if you haven't, it's a pain in the ass. And if you don't have the correct tools, you can end up marring up the finish on here and if you're in the field, the finish ain't going to matter. It'll probably be all spray painted anyway, but still it, it's definitely a bitch because there's a little roll, roll pin in there and you got to set that roll pin in there perfectly while mating up with this and having the spring in the back. It's hell. That would be one hard job to do in the field. So I do not like that at all on the Jackal. And I would be a lot more happier if they made a bolt catch. Maybe that stuck out a little bit more and had a lot more material. That's my biggest gripe. And then also having the other parts. So lastly, would I recommend this rifle to anybody? I mean, honestly, I love all PSA stuff. Like PSA and like what they do. Like they put out some good quality stuff for the price. But in the same breath, some of their stuff is questionable. Because I have had some issues with their stuff. But they, for the most part, they do have some good stuff. I don't want to be a PSA shill. Like, that's not what I'm here for. And, that, like, that's not what I want to do. And, yes, PSA does send me guns and stuff. But I do pay for them. I buy them at a discounted price. But I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this gun is awesome. Or that, that gun is awesome. Or this gun's awesome. Whenever I really, truly don't feel that way. Honestly, what it all comes down to is it has to be your choice. If this is something you're looking for, this gun shoots well. It puts out decent groups. It's reliable. It has a lot of different uh, modifications you could do to it for the most part. Um, it just got a few little quirks in it. And that might iron out over time. You might just want to wait. Who knows? Or you might just really want the Jackal. It has to be all up to you. It's your pocket, buddy. It's not mine. So... You would have to make that decision. I hope this video helped you guys and uh, have a blessed day. I'm out. Peace.